So we've got a Game Gear here. It's a two chip, a clean screen installed. And we have an issue with it that I thought would be interesting to do a video on. It's not fixed yet, so we've got to fix it. But if we turn it on, you can see that the game loads, but data's kind of scrambled. So interesting notes are the fades work. So you saw, if I turn it off and on, you'll see like the fading of the screen works. So it's got smooth fading. And I think even then, the... Yeah, it's like it's varying where the blocks of data are. But see how it's kind of the data's there, but it's in sort of blocks, like, you know, set blocks, 8 pixel blocks, 16 pixel blocks. That's an interesting thing. Uh, that's what we need to, you know, focus on. So what I'm suspecting this is either a bad line or damage trace or bad RAM. So we're just going to investigate this one, probe it out, and see what the fix is. If any of you guys have got a similar issue, then you know where to look. So let's just jump in and start scoping this thing straight away and let's see what we can find. All right, so we've got the Game Gear here. We've got a clean juice power in it, so we can do this nice and wirelessly. And I've just attached a ground wire for the oscilloscope probe. And we've got Sonic in, as we've already seen. So let's turn it on and look at the problem. And you can see this problem is this kind of, the data is there, the screen is showing, like the correct info and the fades are right, but the data's in the wrong position. So this is a classic sign usually of uh, bad video RAM. It can be bad work RAM depending on how the sprites are stored. But I'm pretty sure in a Game Gear, if I remember rightly, um, the video RAM, which is this one here, uh, is responsible for placing the, uh, the video data in the right spots. So it gets given the data by the ASIC. Uh, so here's the two ASICs, basically the CPUs, if you will. The MPU is here, and on a one chip, uh, all three of these combine into a single chip. So when you have a one chip, all these three chips move over to here. Uh, this is the work RAM. So this is what loads the game into the system. And this is where I'm saying the work RAM could also handle the sprite position, how it's loaded jargon. Um, but I don't think it is. I think it's more than likely the video RAM on the back, uh, which is responsible for taking the sprite data and placing it on the screen in the right place. So the ASIC will ask for uh, the video data, those blocks of information to display onto the screen. So the ASIC asks that video RAM on the back, give me the data at this position, and then it returns that information and then sends it out to the screen. Uh, in this case, we've got a clean screen on. So I think, at a guess, it's going to be either bad video RAM or a broken trace from the second ASIC here uh, to the video RAM. And this is just from experience, but I thought it's a really good uh, example to show you on video, and let's just live debug this. And the quickest way to find out what it is, is if you've got an oscilloscope, just turn it on and probe around. And it's really, really quick then to try and find the issue. So if we just take a look at uh, Retro6.wiki, uh, where I've pinned out every device. Here's the video RAM. This is in uh, Repairs and Schematics, Game Gears, and currently it's in the Reading Game Cartridge section. I will move all these kind of pinouts to probably schematic section. But for now, they're in the... Uh, reading the game cartridge. This is the video RAM, which is the one we've just seen on the back. Uh, I've done a screenshot of the one ASIC RAM for the video, but it's exactly the same for the two chip. That's why I've just done one picture. So what happens on this chip is all the data and all the address lines are joined on the circuit board underneath this chip. So A1 is joined to D1, D0 is joined to A0, and so on. So when it goes up to... Uh, the ASIC, in this case, is the 2ASIC. Um, you can see, or well, we can't on that one. Just to open up the 2ASIC. You can see here, we call it AD for address and data because it's combined. So AD0 on the 2ASIC goes to both D0 and A0. And this is where the video data is. So my suspicion is either this chip's bad, which we could hot swap over, or a bit quicker than that, and less work, is to probe all these pins. So if we just probe the video chip for all these pins and check they're there, if they're all there, we'll go up to the 2ASIC and probe all the pins down here, which is all the video signals, which go to that chip. Uh, and there's a few around the bends. So there's a few here, goes up, and then there's a few here. So basically, we've just got to probe these pins nice and quickly and probe the video pins nice and quickly. And all we're looking for is missing information where there should be information. So it's pretty simple. We've got the game, turn it on, 
Sega's loaded, test the scope works. And if we remember, I've got up on my screen these pins. So I'm gonna go from top left over, and it's quite easy to remember that um, the ground is here, then it should be data all the way, except for the third pin to the end, and then data. So all I've got to remember really is there's no data on the first pin, no data on the third to end pin, and the rest should be data. If that works, we'll go down to here, and again, every single pin should have data, bar the five volt at the end. So really, we only need to ignore top left, bottom right, and third pin in. Everything else should show data. At this point, I don't care what the data is, uh, I just wanna see if there is data. So starting at, might as well zoom in on the chip. Starting at the top corner here, obviously there'll be nothing, because that's the ground. Then we should have data, which we do. And you can see the data, I think I've mentioned this a few times in a few videos, but the data looks potentially sort of corrupt if you see these half peaks. Um, so if I just pull up the scope a second. So you see these half peaks that aren't quite full voltage. This would normally in most circumstances indicate a potential issue. But in the case of the data lines, because it's controlled by the RAM and the ASIC and the game cartridge, this is just a point at which data gets released and recontrolled and it's just a, a rising and collapsing level. So this is normal and what you'd expect to see. If nothing hit the five volt line or there was a lot of lower signals, it might be something to look at. But you can always use a working board to compare to as the best case uh, for Game Gears. So that's the signal that we're looking for, that kind of messy data signal. Uh, and always try to probe at the top of the chip here to make sure it gets right into the chip. So that's good. That's good. That's good. Good. And it was the third from the end we didn't want to see data. Uh, is that third from the end? One, two, three, four, five. No, so that's... That's five, ah, there you go. That looks like a broken trace. See how we've got a very faint wobble of data. Um, just freeze that and show you. So that's classically what broken traces end up looking like, either nothing or something very low. So the likelihood is this is meant to be five volts and it's not. So that's one issue. So let's just keep probing because sometimes there's more than one issue. It's not always just one. Uh, let's go back from the other side. So we have something there. Something there. This should be nothing because it's ground. Something there. And this was the broken trace. See if I just push on under it's just a bad solder joint. No, so it's soldered good. But it's bad. Okay, so fifth pin from the top right we need to repair. Uh, on the bottom, it should be data all the way down of some form. So that's good. 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 All good. And again, the, the beauty of it is I'm not really at this stage of diagnosing, needing to know much information, looking for anything specific. I'm just looking for completely dead, broken, or strange looking traces, and that's it. That's good, and that's five volts. Yeah, so on this chip, the only signal that's missing is one, two, three, four, five, it was. Yeah, so pin five. So that will be um, A5. So A5 is bad. Um, so let's just check whether it's um, functional on the two ASIC. So A5 is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 pins up. So let's just flip this over. Go to the ASIC here. And it's 11 pins up. We were expecting to see the data because that's where the data comes and goes from. That's where the connection is basically. So let's take a look. We have pin one, two, three, which is five volts, nothing and nothing, which is right. Pin four is the starter data, five's data, six is nothing. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, sorry, six, seven is nothing rather. Yep, seven is nothing. Then 8, 9, 10, 11 are data, and the 11's the missing one. So 8, 9, 10, and 11. And you can see 11 is present here. So we have the data coming from the ASIC here. 
and it's simply not making its way around to the RAM chip. So if we solder a wire to this pad, which I can make some kind of little thing for me to not have to count the chips again. So if I solder to there um, and to the other side, that should fix the problem. So the way I solder, let me just turn the power off now, disconnect the scope. So let's just get some flux on. And don't worry about bridging pins, they're easy to um, fix if you accidentally bridge them. Got some solder, I'm going to pre-tin the pin. Uh, so again, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. One more check. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So, it's this pin here. Put some extra solder on. Get a wire. And I'll just use uh, Kynar wire for this. can probably use enameled wire for a bit nicer connections when it's fine joints, but uh, this is fine for now. That's tacked onto the leg. Looks like it's on the other leg there, but it isn't. It's just uh, the camera angle of not having any depth perception, but that isn't, you know, that's not connected to this pin here, so that's solid on there. So we just got to tack on that. We just gently bend it round, come to the other side, and now we're working on a nice big chip here. And it was fifth pin, I think from um, the end. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, fifth pin from the end. So, solder, bit of flux again. One, two, three, four, five. There we go. One, two, three, four, five, just pre-tin the pad, get the wire, at a good angle. And again, one, two, three, four, five. There's the connection there. And now because we've got resistors there, I'll probably bend that out of the way there. And make it a little bit neater. There we go. And I'd say that'll do for now. So that's the fifth pin in. Let's just double check the connections right. One, two, three, four, five. Yep, fifth pin in, not shorting anything else. Goes around to the ASIC and we just double check on the web again. So it's A5 here, one, two, three, four, five. And it is pin 11, I think it was. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So if we count that on hours. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Cool. So that's the hopefully the only repair work we have to do. And now let's see what happens if we flip over, turn on. And there we go. It's now back to functional. Let's just uh, give it a minute. I think the brightness wheel is a little bit grimy. It was flickering, but that was the brightness wheel. Nothing to do with the... Uh, yeah, you see the slight flickering of brightness there. So this brightness wheel wants replacing, but the actual data issue we had, screen data is fixed. So hopefully if any of you have that issue where the data is kind of visible on the screen, but in set blocks, if you will, um, this should help you figure out that it's effectively either this chip is bad, the video chip, there's a short on the chip, or the ASIC on the other side has a short heave or a break. It's basically this chip and the video RAM are involved in generating the video signals. Uh, every video issue is usually different, so it's, it is important about how the signal looks, and it's important about what visual effect it gives, but in this case, the data kind of being present, but scrambled in that very kind of specific blocks um, indicates that it's specifically related to video RAM and not some other issue. So that's another one restored. 
If you've got anything you want to see me repair, any console or mods to do, just let me know, and I'll happily do them, and I'll see you in the next one.